Welcome everyone, I'm Stip.com of Three Sheets Thieves, and this is our TFT Patch 10.2 Rundown. Alright, let's start off with the system changes. So, a few minor changes here, nothing that I think is going to affect the quality of gameplay too much. First off, uh, for the PvE rounds in between rounds, we'll be going from 20 seconds to... Uh, going to 20 seconds down from 30 seconds um generally not a real big deal i don't think just a quality of life help make games you know that much faster save you 30 seconds a game um if you're wheeling and dealing in the first few rounds i, I really can't imagine a situation where this is too big of a deal uh so a good change there all right next up we got some hits to some of the different rng mechanics as far as items and drops in the first few pve rounds so first off for small and medium boxes or the gray and blue um loot bubbles the four gold from the gray and the seven gold drops from the blue have been removed. So what that means is generally in the early game, the highest of high rolls as far as gold has been removed. Um, I don't know how many games this is necessarily going to impact, but I don't think we'll be seeing anyone with, say, you know, 30 gold heading into the first round of PvP combat uh, really anymore. I think that dream is just about dead. Now, as far as RNG generally... We also see that they've raised the RNG floor. Um, they weren't exactly specific in the patch notes as to what that means in terms of numerically, but I think generally across all games, you're going to see more standard starts, more consistency in terms of number of items, amount of gold, um, champions. I think that's all going to work out just to be generally a bit higher. Now, you're still going to have variation. It's still an RNG system, so there's still going to be some high rolls. There's still going to be some low rolls, but in general, I think on the low roll side, you're going to see a little bit less frequent of the worst out, worst case outcomes in fact i just had a game the other day where after the first three pv rounds my total drops had been a singular nico's help which generally is good but singular nico's help two gold and a nocturne i don't think those starts are going to happen as frequently anymore and in general that's good for the players all right so now for some of the late game rng so now that was the rng floor now we're talking about the rng ceiling um so in the later PvE rounds, not including the Epic Monsters, so these are going to be your PvE rounds prior to uh, Dragon and Rift Herald. So we're looking at um, Wolves, we're looking at the Chickens, Krugs. Um, you're way less frequently going to get full items, and you never can get two in a game anymore. Um, which, first of all, if you were one of these people getting two full drops from the PvE rounds... Good on you, but that certainly wasn't me. Uh, I hadn't seen that before, and you certainly won't anymore as it's been removed from the game. As far as full items, generally, as you approach that RNG ceiling, right, so in those later rounds, say in Wolves or in Chickens, um, you're going to be somewhat more likely to see the full item drop, but you have to already be rolling in the highest tier to get one to drop so again not totally clear numerically what this change means other than you're never going to see two full items in a game you're less likely to see a full item generally but from that lower base level you are more likely to see a full item as you approach the higher ends of the rng ceiling a little bit confusing we'll have to see how it plays out in games Finally, as far as system changes, uh, and I think this has been a big complaint from players, I've seen it in a lot of my games, is that generally, Force of Nature is way less likely to appear in the carousels and to be dropped. Um, I think this is not a huge deal, but for those players who end up lower on the scoreboard earlier in the games, and as a result are picking earlier in the later carousels, this is kind of a big impact. Uh, Force of Nature was a great way to take a losing comp and propel it to, say, a top four comp or even a winning comp, and that high roll is generally going to be reduced. Again, doesn't mean you're not going to see it, but you're going to see it less. On the whole, I think that's good for the game. I think Force of Nature is pretty broken. Um... But given, especially with the recent nerfs to Blade Masters, given the lower priority placed on Spatula in some cases, I think double Spatula is now going to be really the only way you're going to see Force of Nature. Um, and that was good before, it's good now. So not a huge change there other than you're no longer going to get this huge endgame swing when you pick up a Force of Nature by luck off the carousel. That's all the system changes for now, and I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Doc V, who's going to take us through the item and trade adjustments on this patch. Thanks, Step. I'm Doc V, and I'll be going over the item changes and trait changes for patch 10.2 for TFT. 
First of all is, of course, the change to Bramble Vest, doing 80, 120, and 160 damage per tick per tier, uh, now being up to 100, 140, and 200. The second change is on Bloodthirster, going from 40% lifesteal to 50% lifesteal. The second change is to Gins, or the third change, sorry, is to Ginsu's Rage Blade, uh, from 4% increased attack speed per stack to 5%. The next change is on Hextech Gunblade, uh, the lifesteal increased from 25% to 33%. And while I understand that Riot kind of wants all items to be viable, I still think that Hextech will just always be a worse version of Bloodthirster. The next change is on the Iceborne Gauntlet Freeze, and it's increasing the duration of it from 1.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. The next change is on Locket, and that is seeing the tiers of Shield increase from 250 to 275 to 300, up to 250, 275, and 350. And well, that seems to be only a big buff, of course, to the third tier, because it is the only buff to the item. The point is, is that the multiplication effects of multiple lockets reinforce the fact that, like, hey, if you are able to get this on your Scion 3, your Volibear 3, that all of a sudden this multiplies across your builds that you already wanted for survivability, meaning that Olaf is going to become a bigger threat, especially with the buffs on the other items. And I think it means that you're probably going to be forcing trying to build this in, I would say, probably around the mid-game. The last change, and this is the one I'm most excited about, so, like, of course, I'm going to be smiling like an idiot, is the Luden's Echo buff. I think that this change is just absolutely degenerate, right? Like, people who wanted to play Luden's before still wanted to play Ludens. There was nothing about any of the changes to like champs or traits or anything that necessarily made me like rethink it. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the original Ludens before this patch had the three splash damage at 120, 160, and 200 for that tier three. And now it is increased at every step of the tier system uh, up to 125, 175, and 250 for that tier three. And to me, that's just broken. Like, no one needed this. No one, like, necessarily, okay, people wanted it. I'm, so I'm not going to say that no one did. It's just that I don't understand necessarily what about the holistic game statistics were telling Riot that they necessarily needed to go for something like this. The next section of the patch notes for 10.2 is the trait changes, and there's a couple of significant ones. Um, but first, we'll start off with the assassins. Um, so the crit strike damage that you get at each tier of the assassin buff at 3 and 6 uh, goes up from 50 and 150, actually up to 65% to 225% at that upper tier. The next change is to Blade Master, and there are a couple of them that happen here. So the first one is that Blade Masters can no longer store attacks, um, and I'm sure everyone's seen this, where all of a sudden, like, the Blade Master champ is all of a sudden just popping off constantly, doing nothing but swinging at you, like, decimating your front lines, smashing up your back line. That won't happen anymore. And while I think it was a good meme, I think it's just better for the game that that, like, interaction is definitely removed. The second change that happens is that the chance of extra attacks goes from 40% down to 35%. I think, while well, most people had anticipated that that ends up killing Blade Master, I don't think that that's necessarily true. Uh, the next change is actually to Desert, and it's the armor reduction uh, that is being switched up by Desert. So at the lowest tier, of course, it was 50% before. Now it will be changed to 40%. And then the other changes at the upper tier, where actually we see a buff to it, going from 90% reduction to 100% reduction. The next change is actually to Inferno. I'm super excited about this buff. So the the buff originally was 70, 140, and 210 per tier, and now it's going from 70 to 150 to 250. Um, and I think the reason that I'm excited about this buff is just that, one, I think that these patch notes in general are rewarding the consistently sticking to more, like, deeper developed teams, right? It's going to be rewarding you for that nine wardens build it's rewarding you for the nine infernos build um and even though nine infernos is kind of a meme i think the fact that the reward for it is so much higher at the end game means that it's probably at least going to be being played a lot more 
The next change is on Mage. And this one, kind of like the item changes I talked about before. I don't know who was asking for this. Like, so the change, if you didn't know, is only at the upper tier with six mages. So before, if you got six mages, you had a 100% chance to double cast. I'm sure we all knew that. But the new change is that you still get that 100% chance to double cast plus 20 AP, which I, I don't really understand why. Like, um... I think it's only locking the idea in that like ocean mage is always going to be seen in your lobby, right? There will always be one person that is like forcing that comp and if they're going to be trying to climb with it, that person is probably going to be me, but that doesn't matter. The next change is the shadow. Uh, the bonus damage window of opportunity increases from five seconds to six seconds, which I think is huge. And then the damage itself at the lower tier will stay at 65, but the upper tier will increase from 150 to 175. Um, as like a godless shadow and glacial player, I absolutely love this buff. I think that the changes that make Olaf's items better mean that your opportunities with shadow and glacial just increase. The next one is warden. So for those of you that don't know, the warden additional armor was 150, 300, and 450% at each additional tier. Now it is going from 150 to 300 to 999%. I, I think that's great. Okay. And then I, I know I've been saying that every like trait change is my favorite, but like this woodland six change is that if you get six woodland, it will clone every single one of these champions. I'm fully on board with this. I think that this, like, six woodlands will probably never be seen. Maybe, like, one out of every, I don't know, like, 10 or 12 games. But when it does, it's going to be such a meme. And I think it's going to be so much fun. Um, but this is definitely just, like, some meme lord stuff. Like, the requirement to force yourself up to eight, then magically get, like, the one out of ten roll in order to get a woodland lux. And then all of a sudden have, like, a... a competent enough comp that you're actually doing damage to people is kind of crazy to me and i think the fact that people rush woodland in the beginning just to kind of get out some free wins makes the dream kind of impossible but i still think that it's definitely going to be fun thanks doc all right let's take a look at the champion changes on patch 10.2 First off, we have a nerf to Leona, whose damage reduction went from 90% at level 2 to 80%, and from 140% at level 3 to 120%. Her level 1 damage reduction was unchanged. I think this is a good nerf, though I think the de dev team could have been more aggressive with this nerf, and we'll have to see how it goes. Generally, I think it's going to make level 2 Leona less oppressive in the early to mid game, and level 3 Leona considerably less stalwart in the late game, though it's possible that the 6 Warden buff is going to make up for some of that loss of defensive stats um, for Leona. So unclear how this nerf totally shakes out, but I do think it was necessary, and I wouldn't be, see, be too surprised to see them go further in the next patch. All right, next up we have a buff to Malzar. So his stats remain unchanged, but the minion stats were buffed. So minion health across all ranks previously was 250. Now, at rank 1, it's unchanged, but at rank 2, you get 50 health to 300, and at rank 3, you get 150 health to 400. So these are going to be some considerably tankier minions. On to Ezreal buffs. Okay, Ezreal buffs and pretty big ones at that. So first off, his base health was increased from 600 to 650, and then his ability and damage was also increased at every level. So from 200, 400, 800 to 225, 450, and 900 at ranks 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Previously, Ezreal was just a little too weak. Um, generally, the, the priority of glacial comps had decreased, and the priority, therefore, on Ezreal kind of had fallen down. Now, stacking Ezreal was still a fairly viable strat in the mid game, though not a particularly powerful one, in my opinion. And I think this buff is really going to help him um, take a bit of a jump to being to having some mid game priority. So now, especially with the buffs to Ludens um, and Seraph's Embrace basically remaining unchanged, I think Ezreal is going to make for a pretty good mid game carry. Okay, so still in the three cost units, we've now got a Karma nerf and a much needed nerf at that. So at ranks one, two, and three respectively, previously Karma gave her linked unit and his attack speed steroid of 60, 70, and 80% respectively. That's being nerfed on this patch. So now, Karma will give her linked unit 
40, 60, and 80% attack speed buffs, um, respectively. So rank 3 is unchanged, which I, I don't mind. Uh, you know, you're not going to see rank 3 karma that frequently, though it is possible. But the really big signal here is now what was previously her rank 1 attack speed bonus is now her rank 2 attack speed bonus, right? So that's how out of balance karma was. Um in terms of just, I think they could have nerfed her harder, honestly. Her shielding is really strong. Um, Lunar is so easy to tech in. Obviously, they're trying to hit that not in the trait here, but with nerfs to Leona and Karma. Uh, but I'm still a little concerned. I don't think we're done with this Lunar thing as far as patch adjustments go. Okay, so we go from a nerf to Karma to a buff to Scion. Um, so Scion gets a buff going from a starting mana of 50 to a starting mana of 75. So to be clear, the amount of mana it costs to cast his ability remains unchanged. That's still 125, but he now starts with 25 more. So basically that first alt is going to come out faster. It's in fact, you know, it's going to come out, uh, what? 33% faster. That's a big deal. Um, you know, you're more consistently going to be getting that disruption in the early, in, in the very beginning of a fight from your scion, which can be huge. You know, if you're running berserkers and you need time for your Olaf to get off the ground, you need time for your shadows to really capitalize on that first six seconds of damage. This is a pretty good buff for scion. Um, you know, again, it's it's only affecting that first wave of the fight because it's going to take just as much time then to get the second alt off. But I think with the damage shadows are going to have on this patch, all you're going to need is that first little bit of disruption. Okay, now we're going to take a look at a nerf to Sivir, and a very big nerf at that. So previously, her ricochet ability led her auto attacks to bounce 10 times at all ranks. That's now been cut in half at rank 1, down to 5, 7 at rank 2, and only 9 at rank 3. So even with a tier 3 Sivir, you're not getting as many bounces as you were getting with a tier 1 Sivir before. This is a huge deal, a mammoth deal. Um, you're getting fewer hush procs. You're going to be way less able to clear minions, allowing summoners to sneak back into the fold, as I mentioned with Malzahar earlier. Um, your auto attacks might only hit, only hit the front line early on, especially with a tier 1 server. You're only getting 5 bounces. That might run down the line of 6 wardens, and you're not going anywhere, right? So... I think this is a crippling blow for Sivir. They've been hitting against this Blade Master comp, um, you know, patch after patch, and th this really feels like the death knell to the Sivir stack comps to me. Um, I personally think that Sivir is still going to be used, uh, but I think it's just going to be to facilitate for Desert in a Kha'Zix carry type of situation or an Azir carry type of situation. I don't think you're stacking your items on Sivir anymore. Um, I think Hush remains okay, but without the more bounces, it's just going to be less effective. Um, and I don't think the Sivir win condition, the Sivir 2 Hush win condition, I don't think that's there anymore. Um, and I don't think that's the way it's going to go. A couple more changes here. We've got a buff to Vigar. Uh, so Vigar buff, kind of an interesting one because I, I don't think it's that relevant, but uh, basically at ranks 1, 2, and 3, he gained 25 spell damage at rank 1, 50 spell damage at rank 2, 75 spell damage at rank 3. He, here's the thing. The rank 3 buff hardly matters, right? Given the nature of his ability, at rank 3, you're likely executing most every unit you hit with your ability. And if they're a rank 3 unit anyways, that 75 damage is only marginally impactful. On to an Olaf nerf. Okay, Olaf nerf. This is a this is a numerical one that I'm not going to take the time to dive into in terms of doing the math for you. I'm just, I'm not here for that level of nerdiness, but I'll talk through it. So Olaf's base attack speed has been reduced from 0.85 attacks per second to 0.8 attacks per second. Um, so first off, it's worth noting that adjustments to the base attack speed are a very big deal because any percentage increase that you're working off, that you're getting from your items, is working off that base stat. So you can think about this nerve as not just being 0.05 attack speed, but actually being a compounding amount throughout the, the fight as you build attack speed on your Olaf. Um, so it's a bigger deal than it seems. It's not, you know... It's not the 3 AD nerf to Sivir from, say, uh, the main League of Legends game. It's not quite that level of meme tier. Um, I do think it has some impact, but I don't think it necessarily impacts Olaf's effectiveness on this patch, and 
I think you can make a credible argument that Olaf is just as good, if not better, given the buffs to some of his core items. That's all the adjustments they made. We have one kind of important bug fix, though. I'm not going to go through all of them because they're generally just comical, like Karma no longer being 7.8 feet tall. That, that's some great Riot spaghetti coating there. Um, but there was one pretty important bug fix. So the bug fix was for Kindred. And so now when you put Jeweled Gauntlet on Kindred, she properly can crit um, with her ability. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, with the buffs to Shadow, um, I think Kindred stacking is going to be very strong. I think 6 Shadow Kindred, um, it could prove a problem on this patch. I'm not saying, I'm not guaranteeing it, but I, I'm going to be playing that comp a lot, I think. And some of the time I'd be putting Jewel Gauntlet on Kindred. You know, you a lot of times you end up with uh, you end up with the rod, um, the needlessly large rod. And for her, since Merlin Namacom's already baked into her kit, you're not frequently building that. You're you're never building that for her. And so a great substitute with the rod, if you have another way to go, is Jewel Gauntlet with the Crick gloves, right? And uh, that can be a lot of damage. I mean, that could really be some serious damage. So I think it's possible that. This is pretty impactful, and I think you're going to see some Jeweled Gauntlet and Kindred in your games, and I think it's going to hurt. After all these changes, of course, there's the question of, like, what teams will I probably be seeing the deal with in my matches? The first one, I think, is Shadow. I think that Shadow buff in damage means that already good Shadow combinations, um, for example, anything that involved, like, husband and wife, um, summoner variants, like the Malzahar being able to possibly get its alt off before that shadow window closes means that we're probably going to be seeing a lot more of it um it's not even necessarily a question of will i be seeing six shadow i think it's just that the window of opportunity for damage has increased means that there's probably going to be a lot of it um and there's no reason to necessarily deviate away from it it's already kind of the track that the meta was going already and now I think that there's just even better reason as to why I should lock into it. The next is on six Wardens. Um, to me, I think that the Warden buffs in general come from a couple of different places. One, of course, is first of all the fact that like the trait itself got buffed. Uh, granted, only at the upper level, but I still think that that's really dangerous. Um, just in terms of like how many people are going to be attempting to get to nine wardens, and then end up just having to stay at six and like tech into some other things in order to swap out of it. So I think that first of all, you're probably going to be seeing six wardens for that reason. The second reason I think is just because the change in desert I think is going to discourage people from playing desert. To begin with, meaning that the chance for counter picks is probably going to be less, and the only people you're going to be counter picked by are maybe like the one or two people that like see it coming, right? Um, but the majority of people, at least at the lower and mid ranks of the ladder, kind of only care about like what is happening in the development of their own team and aren't necessarily going to be paying attention to much else until those late game rounds. Meaning that Warden seems like a very straightforward pick to begin with, especially with the Bramble Vest changes. And so I'd imagine that we're going to be seeing a lot more of it as time goes on. The next one that I wanted to talk about is the Glacial Comps. I think the fact that Olaf just gets benefited by this entire scenario set up with the item changes specifically, I think means that he just becomes even better as the game goes on. Um, the fact that you're probably trying to like mow through wardens or at least even trying to blow up light comps means that he's even better of a pick just because of that alt going off and a bloodthirster or two bloodthirsters makes him almost invincible. Um, in order to get like that additional buff, I do think that you're going to be seeing Ezreal played more in the beginning just because he's a very easy champ nowadays to get up to at least tier two by mid game that I'd imagine that more people are going to be leaving him open just because of the way that Glacial was nerfed in the past, that I think it becomes an easy pick for those who are paying attention to their own trait changes, right? Or trait setups, I should say, that they're just going to, going to be wanting that stun on Olaf as fast as possible. And as soon as Volibear gets added into the comp, I see more people actually questioning, like, why not go for that fourth Glacial? Um, Braum being set up with wardens like it seems like it's a better and better choice to be rushing glacials in general um that 
might just be me wanting it to happen just because like Glacial Shadow is still probably like my favorite team set up uh, before these past couple patches. And even now, like I'll still force it now and again. Okay, the next setup is, and me and Stip agreed with this for the most part, is that some sort of combination of Mage, Infernal, and Warden, I think becomes much more common. Like, the fact of the matter is, is that their trait bonuses mean that if, you know, I can somehow, like, spat this out, I can somehow, um, you know, like, get into more of those tier 2, maybe tier 3 setups with these comps, mean that they're just going to become so much more common. Wardens are going to be providing that wall for either the Infernos or Mages to be going off. I do think that more people are going to be playing Inferno and Mage as a whole. Um, and so I do think that some combination of all three of those is probably going to become more common just for its survivability and its ability to still output damage. So you're going to be able to survive through when like the Berserkers first go off and you probably will actually be able to do enough damage to their team that allows you to like survive out um that initial burst and after that initial burst is over i think that you're actually probably good um especially like getting like vigor off in order to wipe out a couple of the squishier ones especially olaf before his actual um alt goes off means that this is just going to look better and better for you as the game goes on Okay, the next comp that I think you're going to see, and it's not that necessarily that you're going to see a lot of it, but you're going to be see probably for the first couple of days, a lot of people attempting six woodland. I think the meme is just so good that it's almost a question of like, why not do it? Like if I see the stars not aligning, if I see the stars like slightly moving together and like maybe it you know, a couple of turns, I maybe have a comp together that makes sense. I think people are going to go for it. I think people just want to see the meme, especially at the very beginning. Um, people will be willing to throw away LP for it, or at least like I'm willing to throw away LP for it. So I think just six woodlands is going to happen. Um, it's going to suck when it happens because it's a meme and everyone recognizes that it's a meme. Losing to it just sucks that much worse. Thanks for hanging out and walking through patch 10.2 with the Three Sheets Thieves. Let us know in the comments what we got right, what we got wrong, and what comp you're most looking forward to playing on patch 10.2. While you're at it, why don't you drop a like on this video, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified when all our videos go live. Again, thanks for spending the time with us today, and we'll see you all again real soon.